I am not wrong, okay? Under some of these definitions, they say that you have to be so strict that you cannot use any animal byproduct, and that is not possible in today's society. So if you would like to throw away your phone and go live in a stick house. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan, the YouTube channel that is not hosted by a sociopath, a narcissist, or a grifter. Well, this is now two videos in a row responding to Sarah Phelan, AKA the TikTok beef lady, as I called her. In fact, she made a, a comment and on, on our um, Instagram responding to one of our viewers who was having a little discussion with her there. And here's what she said. She said she has to move on from her thread with this um, viewer of ours because she has to move on with her day promoting and defending the beef industry. Like, wow, what a job. How much do they pay you for that? Anyway, I assume you looked me up because of the Happy Healthy Vegan video and his video on YouTube. I would like to say thank you to Happy Healthy Vegan for calling me the quote TikTok beef lady because I love that name and I want to run with it. Well, you're welcome, Sarah. You can have that one free on us. Well, since then, she made a new follow-up video reacting to vegans who were critical of her, of her shoddy research, not researching what vegan means. And in this follow-up video, as you'll see, is maybe even worse than the original video. It just continues her pattern of misinformation and cherry-picking. Yes, it's not just vegans who are cherry-picking. You'll see here. Let's just jump right into her research and the definition of veganism. But it's funny that you guys would think that I wouldn't do my research because I have like a whole law degree and so I basically went to school for three years learning how to research. So well, why don't you tell us that in the first place? You have a law degree, Sarah? Well, yeah, you're infallible. Everything you say has to be true. Well, I mean, I could have done some stupid appeal to authority fallacy like this. I mean, I spent more years than that studying philosophy at the undergraduate and PhD level. So I'm quick to spot flaws in thinking, horrible arguments, and in this case, a logical fallacy. Yes, the appeal to authority fallacy is what she pulled out here. So I did do all of my research before I made that video, but I'm going to put some sources up on here just to prove a point. All right, Sarah, bring it on. You said you're this amazing researcher after getting a law degree. Let's see this thorough research complete with your sources here to show what a deep, complete, thorough understanding you have of what the essence of veganism is. What does veganism really mean? So you mentioned Google specifically, so this is just the Google definition. Okay, the practice of eating only food not derived from animals and typically of avoiding the use of other animal products. Well, this first definition you found here, Sarah, as I'll tell you more in a moment, isn't really a, a proper definition of veganism. Yeah, it's a fine definition of a plant-based diet or a vegan diet, but it just talks about food. Veganism is not food, but let's hear you out. Okay, typically of avoiding the use. You know what, I'll give you this definition. You know, this one, I mean, it's got some leniency in there. Okay, I'll, I'll hand it to you. You can have this one. No, I want no part in this definition. It's very incomplete, very inaccurate. It, again, just describes plant-based eating. Let me just give you a quick example, Sarah, to make my point why veganism isn't just food. The reason why I don't consume animal products and the reason why other fellow vegans don't consume animal products is that we're against animal cruelty and exploitation. And people who are just eating a plant-based diet for non-ethical reasons, they're not vegan. Their doctor could have said, hey, you just had a heart attack or you're about to have one. I'm going to put you on a completely plant-based diet. I know that's going to suck because you love meat and you love hunting and you're a cattle rancher by profession. But in your mind, that person would be vegan, according to these weird definitions that you're pulling out here, these definitions that define veganism solely in terms of what you put into your body food-wise. Okay, this one is from a vegan source, okay? vegan.com. Vegan and vegetarian diets both exclude meat and seafood. Vegan diets go a step further, though, by also nixing every other food of animal origin. So in addition to avoiding meat, vegans steer clear of any dairy products, eggs, and honey. Another definition of veganism in terms of food. Once again, another definition of plant-based eating, a diet that could be followed reluctantly by a cattle rancher, hunter, who was forced to eat this way because of medical reasons. Additionally, vegan foods never contain any byproducts of animal agriculture, such as lard, whey, and gelatin. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you go to the supermarket and see that there's lard in the can of beans, yeah, you don't buy that brand of beans. Yeah, animal products are not found in vegan foods. That's like part of a definition of what vegan food is. Ooh, never contain any byproducts. There is zero leniency in this vegan definition. Yes, there should be zero leniency in the definition of vegan food. There's never animal products in vegan food. What is the problem with that? I mean, yeah. 
Kind of like if you are using a smartphone, which has cattle cholesterol in the screen to watch this video, then you're not a vegan because guess what? Animal byproduct from animal agriculture. No, it's not like that at all. We can't eat cell phones. It was you, Sarah, that brought up this horrible definition of veganism, one which defined veganism solely in terms of what we eat and what we don't eat. And yes, there's no exceptions. Vegan food can't have lard or gelatin or what have you. It wouldn't be vegan food then. It would be illogical. But that was the goalpost you set here. Veganism defined in terms of food. Now you're bringing up cell phones. It's a whole different beast. It's not food. Uh, it's a, it's an Another fallacy. This is a, another just a form of a moving goalpost fallacy. The first goalpost was veganism in terms of food, and now we're talking about cell phones. Okay, Cambridge University. Okay, a person who does not eat or use any animal products, such as meat, fish, eggs, cheese, or leather. Once again, another definition that's lacking the moral ethical component of veganism. Again, this definition of what's a vegan, according to your Cambridge source here, would apply to the cattle ranching hunter who was reluctantly following a vegan diet on the advice of his or her doctor. She could try to play dumb and ignorant. She doesn't know what veganism is, but outside of the world of veganism, it's a well-known fact that there's a difference between plant-based and vegan. Look at this very non-vegan source of news here, medical news news today and they see being vegan is a philosophy and a way of living and we'll look at the vegan society definition in a moment that they refer to but plant-based diets on the other hand are different whereas veganism is a philosophy based on avoiding animal cruelty when someone chooses a plant-based diet it tends to be for other reasons such as their health or the environment so let's take a look at this vegan society's definition of veganism. Heck, it's not perfect, no definition it is, but it does an infinitely better job than any definition she's shown because this definition does not define veganism in terms of food, and it explicitly draws attention to the ethical, moral component of veganism, which separates us from plant-based people. It's a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. And at the end it says here, in dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all animal products derived wholly or partially from animals. And this definition has historical precedence. It goes back to the 1940s, the earliest definition of veganism, as far as I'm aware. Back in 1949, Leslie J. Cross pointed out that veganism is the principle of the emancipation of animals from exploitation by man. So is this the one and only definition of veganism? No, but it's a pretty good one. It's the oldest one. It's been updated throughout time to become more accurate and complete, and it captures the moral component that's the essence of veganism. So if Miss um, Beef TikTok lady here is really thinking she's debunking veganism by using the definition of veganism. It would behoove her to actually use one that vegans typically tend to approve of rather than definitions pulled off Google that just describe eating plants. Doesn't use any animal products. Sounds pretty strict to me. Strict makes it sound like I'm following someone's arbitrary rules, like I'm in school and I really want to break the rules, but I have to follow them so I don't get in trouble. Nope, veganism isn't like that. You don't want to consume animal products. You don't buy food that has gelatin or lard. Let's go back to another vegan source, okay? BeVeganism.com. Hey, I've had a vegan YouTube channel here for over 10 years now, and I've never heard of BeVeganism.com which is no surprise since they only have 271 followers on Twitter and 116 tweets versus, say, the 268.9 thousand followers that the Vegan Society has and over 23,000 tweets. But I went to Be Veganism site and they have this definition of veganism, which ain't half bad. It said veganism where humans do not use any products or derivatives of animals in their day-to-day -day life, ensuring that everyone has the equal right to live. But yet, somehow Sarah manages to cherry pick this definition from this cherry picked obscure website. A person who is vegetarian does not consume any meat. However, they do consume dairy products and the products which might be derived from the animals, such as leather. Whereas veganism does not allow any product which has been directly or indirectly derived from any animal. Man, that one offers no leniency at all. Okay, kind of like under this definition, if you are watching this video, you are not a vegan because you have cattle cholesterol in your phone screen. Congratulations, Sarah. You just debunked veganism using this poorly written definition 
from an obscure website. I mean, to all credit due, yeah, I'm glad they mentioned the animal rights component of veganism. However, as the Vegan Society correctly points out, veganism is not a philosophy or a practice of perfection. Whereas if any cruelty anywhere happens, veganism is null and void. You step on an ant, you're no longer vegan. It says avoiding all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals as far as possible and practicable. Meaning that if you're vegan, you believe animals shouldn't be exploited, you believe they have rights, you're avoiding all foods that have gelatin and meat and cheese and all that. Of course, that's easy, but how are we supposed to exist in a world where you might need a piece of, say, uh, technology, in her case, cell phones, which supposedly may or may not have some kind of animal product in the LCD screens? Uh, it's not entirely clear. What are you supposed to do? Just abstain in the off chance and not be able to participate in the work world and become homeless, not be able to finish your school projects because of some bizarre definition of veganism that doesn't exist only in the minds of people like Sarah Phelan who define it in an impossible way. Again, being a philosophy student, I'm very well aware of the logical fallacy that Sarah is completely relying upon. The Nirvana fallacy, which is comparing a realistic solution, veganism, with an idealized one, that of complete perfection and discounting or even dismissing veganism, the realistic solution, as a result of comparing to a perfect world, some impossible standard of zero harm, zero animal products and anything, even in maybe a cell phone. Look, I really am just trying to prove a point. Um, you guys said I didn't do my research. I obviously did because you can look at the definitions and I am not wrong, okay? Yes, we looked at all your definitions and pretty much all of them sucked. I don't know why I didn't use the Vegan Society's definition. And we showed that you use logical fallacies to try to make your argument too. So no, you're not right. Under some of these definitions, they say that you have to be so strict that you cannot use any animal byproduct. And that is not possible in today's society. Yes, you just described the Nirvana fallacy. Thank you. TikTok beef lady. So if you would like to throw away your phone and go live in a stick house. And not only does Sarah rely upon multiple logical fallacies to make her horrible argument here, she also relies upon just flat out lying, asserting that all LCD screens, all cell phones and everything computers all contain animal products. Not even acknowledging that there's some debate as to whether there's even any animal products in there as I showed on my last video. The fact of the matter is, this is a difficult question to answer. We'd really need the expertise of like say an LCD screen display engineer, which I'm not, and I'm sure TikTok beef lady is not. And it was just this morning, I saw this video from Lifting Vegan Logic, which shed light on the idea that there's most likely absolutely no animal products in these LCD screens. You need the cattle industry to have that device. So that is why I say, vegans don't exist. This is one of my favorite ones, the claim that there is cholesterol in iPhones inside the LCD screens or something like that. And if you try to actually trace this claim back, you only find these like random blog articles with no sources making the claim. And you end up finding that somebody actually just ended up confusing the word cholesterol with cholesteric. And there's basically these things called liquid cholesteric crystals that are in LCD screens. And that's what they're really talking about, not cholesterol. So just to be clear, there's no animal cholesterol in LCD screens. Like I said, this is really hard to research. There's really not a lot of discussion about this online. I don't know any display engineer technologists, but I found one on Cora, which I typically don't refer to on our channel. But in this case, this is the best resource I have. Bob Myers, display engineer and technologist. He's answered over 17,000 questions on Cora. And he says, no LCD uses cholesterol taken from animals. If you've heard about cholesteric LCDs, that refers to a class of LCD materials that are similar to cholesterol at the molecular level, but they are not cholesterol and do not come from animal sources. Furthermore, to make this point even more moot, these materials are also not used in the source of LCDs used in monitors, smartphones, TVs, etc. So despite there being lots of credible evidence that animal cholesterol is not used in the production of smartphone and computer displays, Sarah just goes on freely spouting this myth information, ignoring the fact that she's most likely wrong. If you are watching this video, you are not a vegan because you have cattle cholesterol in your phone screen. Considering you are watching a video on either a phone computer or other smart device, you need the cattle industry to have that device. So if you would like to throw away your phone and go live in a stick house. 
But to be completely honest, guys, I would expect nothing less from someone who receives money, makes their living defending the beef industry, as she says. That's what she does for a living. She defends the beef industry. Like, since when did a multi-billion dollar industry need people to defend them? I mean, I, you never see me, like, defending the broccoli industry. Hey, broccoli, are you listening, Big Broccoli? Give, give me a call. We can hook up. I want to do what Sarah's doing, but for you guys. So, anyway, guys, let me know down below. What do you find the worst thing about her? Is it just her flat? out lying here like saying all cell phones are using animal cholesterol but there's so much information to the contrary is it her logical fallacies that she's relying on is it her just ignoring like well standing definitions of veganism and finding all these obscure ones that make no reference about the ethical component animal rights and just describe veganism in terms of food remember veganism is not food write that down if write anything down tonight guys so hit like share this video and remember doesn't suck being vegan see you next time oh yeah Sarah Friday, come to my live stream, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bring your nonsense and I'll debunk you in real time to your face.